It is a big meeting to address a seriously hot topic. Federal Finance Minister Bill Morneau is sitting down today with Ontario Finance Minister Charles Souza and Toronto Mayor John Tory to talk about solutions for Canada's hottest housing market. Last month, the average price of a detached home in Toronto hit $1.5 million. That is an increase of 32.8% over the past year. Joining me now is personal finance expert Alex Kenji. Great to have you with us on this day today. It's a big day when it comes to talking about it. It is. You know, we're having a really important meeting today between mm -hmm. the federal, provincial, and municipal uh, decision makers on this issue. That's when you know it's a real crisis of national importance when all three levels of government get together, and particularly when the meeting is requested by the federal finance right. minister as opposed to the reverse. So what's the goal? What are they hoping to achieve today? Well, I think what they're trying to do is just have a little bit more coordination. We know that all three of uh, these individuals are concerned by the housing market. They all have different ideas about it, but up to now, uh, each level of government has been acting kind of on its own. So what we would hope to see is for them to just compare notes, uh, see where uh, each person's head is at, so that you don't have these different governments working at cross purposes. Right, because I mean, one thing, I mean, Toronto is so specific in what's happening here. I mean, if you go elsewhere in the country, you're not seeing the housing increase in the price that you are seeing in places like Toronto and Vancouver. So let's talk about options on the table. Uh, the foreign buyers tax that they implemented in Vancouver, uh, is, that's one option. Uh, in the Globe and Mail today, I'll just hold this up. Um, you know, Ontario considering speculation tax on home purchases by non-residents. You can see that there. So that's another source telling the Globe and Mail that. Um, what other options are you hearing and what's viable? Well, you know, this foreign buyers tax is interesting in particular because, you know, people have lots of opinions on is that a good idea? Is it not a good idea? A couple of years ago, lots of questions were being asked. Will it even have an effect? The difference is that now we have the data from Vancouver and the effect over there has been dramatic and immediate. Uh, the, Sales are down, uh, double-digit percentages, active listings are down, I think 18% uh, across the province, 37% in Vancouver, and the total dollar transaction volume is down about 45% across the province of BC. I mean, that's an incredible change. So the challenge for Toronto is whether these people think a foreign buyer's tax in isolation is a good idea or not, they're now facing a situation where that tax is something that exists in the other hot real estate market. And so you never kind of want to be the one uh, without a, a certain tax because that's uh, when you can have capital actually being pushed towards uh, the Toronto market. Uh, we know that at the provincial level, uh, the provincial liberals are concerned about uh, more targeted groups uh, that are in need of help, uh, groups like uh, homeless people, uh, families of modest means. So I would expect to see some uh, targeted measures there. And the well. rental market, too, is going to be uh, talked about today. Let's talk about the expression housing bubble. Mm -hmm. Will it burst? Are we there yet? I, I think, well, I think, yes, we're seeing a burst before our very eyes. But I would caveat that uh, by saying that it was never really one big bubble. What we've kind of had is a series of regional bubbles, like a, a bubble bath, you know. <laughs> and some of those are bursting right now. You see prices are tumbling very, very dramatically uh, in British Columbia, in Vancouver in particular, Calgary as well. Uh, some of these uh, oil-producing regions in Alberta are seeing double-digit drops already today. Meanwhile, Toronto, of course, still uh, showing no signs of slowing down. But I think the big question is, when will that uh, bubble mm -hmm. uh, actually burst? Because what does that really mean for people, homeowners, and people getting into the market? If we say the bubble has burst, what does that mean? Well, in one way, it doesn't change that much for certain people. So let's say that you, last month, you had a certain mortgage payment that you were paying every month. Well, now suddenly, OK, on paper, your house is worth a lot less. And OK, that hurts psychologically. But in a sense, nothing has changed. Your payment is the same. And by the way, if you need to sell your house and move, that's also OK, because as long as the house you're moving into has also dropped in value, it's kind of a wash, or so it seems. The problem arises when it comes time to refinance. And so every five years or so, people don't really think much about this, but technically what happens is the bank actually pays off your mortgage in full and gives you a new, fresh mortgage, uh, new money, and now it's a brand new instrument. And so this doesn't really matter, and people don't usually think about it, but the problem is, what if the total amount that they're comfortable lending you mm -hmm depends on what percentage of the house price. So if the house price drops right. 30 40%, well, that loan is no longer 80% of house value. Now it's 110 120%. So you could have a situation where people are declined for their renewal. 
And that's without an interest rate hike. It could be even worse if interest rates move at the same time. Could we be throwing around the R word, recession, perhaps? Uh, we could. I mean, it's, it is a very it's fragile... It's dangerous territory. It's a fragile recovery, right? And housing is a bigger and bigger percentage of the economy. So for sure, this is one of the reasons why so many politicians are cautious. They want to cool down the market, but of course, they don't want unintended spillover consequences, especially today, where unlike in 2008, we have sustained low oil prices in the background that are causing a lot of pain in areas like Alberta, Newfoundland, Saskatchewan, etc. Great information. We'll be watching closely that meeting today and to see what happens. Thanks so much, Alex. Thank you, here. Lindsay.